from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the special Cube Conversation sponsored by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. This is part of our partner series. You know, the partner business has changed quite dramatically over the years. I mean, it kind of used to be you could make a lot of money pushing hardware and get some pretty good margins there, but increasingly, partners are becoming system integrators. They're becoming much more specialized in helping organizations transform, supporting their digital transformations, their infrastructure modernization, moving to the cloud, hybrid cloud security. It really runs the gamut. And here to, to talk to me about that is Tim Ferriss, who's a solutions architect at GreenPages. Tim, good to see you, thanks for coming on. Great to be here, thank you. So tell me a little bit about GreenPages, kind of a cool name, where did that come from and what are you guys all about? Oh God, my, we're, I'm going to be killed for not knowing the history here, but the I think back, back in the old days, uh, we used to hand out a, a neon green catalog. So we couldn't, uh, we were, back when we were doing cold calls, uh, you know, you'd probably get a lot of, okay, we shipped you a catalog, did you get that? Oh, I'm not quite sure, it may be buried under there. Neon green catalog, you could not lose. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think we do our invoices on neon green paper. Uh, now, but uh, that's good. Green, <laughs> color money. That's so, right. um, so tell us about your role as a solutions solutions architect. What does that entail, and what's your background? Sure. So, so I'm a solutions architect. Uh, we have a number of different solutions architects at Green Pages who have a number of different specialties. Uh, my specialty is storage, uh, disaster recovery, and data management, and, and protection, um, and DR automation. Um, in, in that sort of compute, uh, hyper-converged infrastructure, and hybrid cloud. So specialization, a little bit wide, uh, but uh, we, we, you know, we have other uh, architects who are very deep in networking and hybrid cloud networking and that sort of thing as, as well. So let's get into some of that. I mean, looking at your website, I mean, you guys are into everything. You got software defined, you got cloud, you got mm -hmm. security, you got DevOps, and, and really runs the gamut. And, and well, sometimes in this industry we, we suffer from you know, acronym soup. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is that things are changing quite dramatically. I mean, it used right. to be you'd build an infrastructure of, to support a single application, you'd harden that infrastructure, and that was it, it mm -hmm. became a silo. And, and people don't want that anymore. They, they, they want their data to be shared, they want it out of the silos, but at the same time it has to be, be protected. So what are some of the big trends that you're seeing in the marketplace, and let's get into it. Sure, so, so yeah, many, many years ago, that one, one server, one application thing went, went the way of the dodo. Uh, you just got back from VMworld, and uh, you know, I, I, I paid my dues during the wave one virtualization boom when people were transforming racks and racks of servers into virtual machines. Um, so, so that, and it used to be so easy to impress a customer. You show them a vMotion, and it was like magic. You know, you move a server from this server to that server without missing a beat. Uh, now people are uh, looking at hybrid cloud. So not just cloud, but hybrid cloud. Uh, everybody we're talking to, you know, we, we hear some people say that this is the last major hardware purchase that I want to make. Now I don't know the reality of you know that that's debatable, right? But I think people have a people want to have a roadmap to move their infrastructure to to cloud or cloud services, not just infrastructure as a service, you know, lift and shift, but uh, you know, s uh, software as a service and, and take advantage of that. So helping our customers manage that hybrid cloud journey is a big part of what Green Pages Yeah, and, and of course what the customer is really telling you is we don't want to spend a lot of time you know, provisioning LUNs anymore because <laughs> it doesn't right. have value to our business. We want right. to focus on building new apps or, or our digital transformation, Absolutely. et cetera. So, and, and I think you're right. I mean, it, it's, it's sort of aspirational that, okay, we're not going to buy any more hardware anymore. To me, the key is can the industry, through R&D, simplify what's on-prem, mm -hmm. and you know, let's face it, those mission critical apps, you don't just want to throw them into the cloud, I mean, they're right. working. Uh, you don't want to have to refactor them and migrate, that's sort of an evil word, but so mm -hmm. to the extent that the industry can deliver that cloud-like experience on-prem, you can start to see this hybrid cloud vision uh, evolve. What are your thoughts on that? Sure, so I, I think in, in H, it's, it's fortuitous that we're here with HPE. I think they're doing a couple of things with some of their products and services that, that help, that help uh, push that. So it used to be that storage was relatively complicated. There were a lot of knobs and dials on storage that you could, that you could push and rotate in order to increase performance. You could have a number of different RAID levels, uh, you know, the three-part chunklets and, and this sort of thing. And there was a lot of customization you could do as a, you could use as a customer in order to, to uh, properly set up your array for your workloads. 
people appreciate that level of, uh, of uh, detail that you, can, uh, that you can put into that, but they, they, they want it easier. Um, so we see, I'm seeing a trend toward less uh, customization and, and more ready, just set it and forget it arrays. Uh, nimble, um, you know, the three par array was highly available. Very good, very good array, very fast but a little bit higher end to operate. Nimble, with HPE's acquisition of Nimble, they've taken that uh, operational complexity down significantly, not only with operating the array, provisioning the LUNs, but managing it, maintaining it, and performing predictive analytics through, uh, through InfoSight. And, and that sort of thing. So, so at, at the storage level, I think Nimble and that that paradigm is being uh, is is transforming uh, storage, and uh, HPE's GreenLake uh, technologies. Uh, you know that 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 is that is very much um, a, an answer to the private cloud, having that hyperscale feel, that ability to expand uh, elastically and get out of the hardware maintenance business. Uh, but by using the green cloud, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not green, green yeah, lake green service. Lake. Yeah. yeah, so um, actually a little bit of history here. So 3PAR was actually, the company was formed in the early 2000s before the, the, the term cloud computing really came out. They used, I think, utility computing in their, okay. uh, yeah. in their, their S1 registration. And, but what 3PAR did is it really simplified that high end and then they, mm -hmm. 3PAR reached escape velocity by going after the, the high end you know, EMC base and did you know, very well and of course, you know, uh, uh, famously got acquired by, uh, by Hewlett Packard at the time, HP, and then became HPE. Nimble now is, is bringing sort of a new level uh, mm -hmm. where you're talking about intelligent automation and, and AI managing infrastructure, yep. predictive analytics, and, and, and that drives more automation, which I think, Tim, has got to be really a theme of hybrid cloud. I mean, cloud is all about automation, so hybrid cloud, on-prem and public, you know, some kind of interconnection, has to be highly automated, doesn't it? It, it absolutely does, and, and people don't have time to, to turn the dials and to optimize their storage. They need systems that will do that for them. Um, and, and there's, you know, the, the, the level one, the level two support that you get through those predictive analytics of, of InfoSight are critical to, to customers. They don't, you know, a lot of customers don't have time for full-time storage admins uh, anymore. And, and these technologies are what's freeing up those resources, those people resources, uh, to do other strategic things for the business. Especially in small and mid-sized businesses where you know, they're, general, they're generalist, really not really specialist at, at mm -hmm. one, one thing. Um, I want to come back to the hybrid cloud. You know, thinking about data governance and management and security, mm -hmm. are we at the point where you can start to see sort of a consistent framework across clouds, <laughs> uh, yeah, smiling. So what's the journey there? How are we going to get there? What, what inning are we in? You know? <laughs> yeah, I would say we're, we're certainly early days uh, there. I think they're, you know, customers need to be much more cognizant of the tools that they use and buy. They can't be propri necessarily proprietary on-prem tools. The best use of your money is to buy tools that have, uh, that, that can be used to manage hybrid and, and secure hybrid infrastructures. So, so that should be a main qualifier for what people are looking for for security, uh, security technologies and that sort of thing. It's not quite the Wild West, though we still see, um, you know, there's that shared governance model, that shared responsibility in the cloud, and I think there are still some who haven't woken up to that basic uh, concept, that, that just because I move a workload to the cloud doesn't mean it's no longer my responsibility to secure that data, though we're still talking with people today who, 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 who may be under that mis, misimpression. You're right, Tim, I mean, that, that, that is not well understood. I mean, people think, oh, I moved in the cloud, I'm good. But there's, there is a shared responsibility model, whether it's mm -hmm. for security or governance, et cetera. And when you talk to chief information security officers, officers, they'll tell you, yeah, you know, the cloud vendor might secure the the storage device, right. you know, but it's really our responsibility to do everything else. And the list of everything else is still still quite long. Absolutely, uh, you know, rights, roles, and responsibilities, uh, those sorts of things. Firewall rules. They provide the firewall. They make sure the firewall is up to date on its firmware. But you're setting the rules. You're setting the ingress, egress. Uh, so, so yes, it's very much still a shared responsibility. And uh, and yeah, it's it's eye opening still to some. Um, 
Let's talk about your partnership with HPE. We talked about some of the products, but, mm -hmm. but what do you look for in a, in a, in a partner? Obviously, I said before, you know, it used to mm -hmm. be when you're just selling boxes, you want margin, and that's, you st I'm sure you still want yeah. margin, but yeah. you, there's got to be more, right? I mean, wh well, yeah, I mean, we've known for quite a while. I mean, we've seen the writing on the wall that, you know, it, I, I remember the, the glory, the, I don't know, glory days, the old days, back when people could make a fortune selling memory back before the turn of the century. <laughs> turn of the century, I'm, I'm dating myself. <laughs> but it's true, you could make a, quite a bit of money selling selling memory back then, um, but today, and certainly over the past 20 years, uh, people, um, our clients are choosing partners that they can't just, not just the cheapest price, but people who can talk with them about a solution, not just a product, um, hear their business problems and turn that into technology solutions that help them address those problems. Uh, so that, that's, what I, that's what I would look for as a partner if I were, uh, you know, we look for, to HPE for the same thing, not just pushing product where it, uh, to sell product, but to solve business problems. And I think, you know, HPE is, is listening, they're hearing their clients, uh, they, they, uh, they were listening to them with the acquisition of uh, HPE Nimble, they were listening to them, how they're expanding InfoSight from just the Nimble platform to 3PAR and ProLiant and, and other things and expanding some of those things. Uh, through, yeah, the right. pendulum has swung. I mean, after the dot-com boom, it became cut, cut, cut. Mm. Everybody was concerned about budgets. You know, IT doesn't matter anymore. We heard yeah, all that. Cost and that's, center, right? And that's yeah. totally changed, right? IT is driving revenue. It's driving right. top line. Of course, budgets are still critical, and we talked a lot about simplification, which is a lot about attacking the IT labor problem. But right now, the sentiment with this, you know, the booming economy, we're in this ten, you know, ten, ninth year of a of a, of a run on a, on a bull market. Obviously, the late cycles, but but the sentiment is much more toward how do I enable the business with technology. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So so how yeah, how do how do how does IT add value back to the business? They can do that through AI, through through uh, through analytics uh, and through uh, digital transformation in general. I think we we've, we've seen a you know, I, there's always been this upward curve to storage growth, but it's it's dramatically increased. I think what it's it's upward of 40, predicted to be upward of 40 zettabytes or something like that by the year 2022, and that's because more and more businesses are using this data uh, more creatively. They're saving it more, and not only is that growing the, the the usable data, but they need to retain it for longer. You've got to retain it, you've got to protect it, and and we still got data protection problems not just storing it and providing the right uh, the performance level for it, um, but it's, it's really difficult. And then you've got to secure all that extra data as well. Well, I think you're right too. The, the, the curve is getting nonlinear. I mean, it used to be, I've said this often on theCUBE, that we, we, for decades, we've marched to the cadence of Moore's Law, mm -hmm. but now the, the innovation sandwich, if you will, it's about a, applying uh, machine intelligence to, to data mm -hmm. and then automating, whether it's public cloud or on-prem, you know, cloud-like, is mm -hmm. being able to scale. Right. And and that's the, it's it's those three pieces of the of the sandwich that are now driving mm -hmm. innovation. Not no longer the doubling of transistors every eighteen months. Yeah. So so do people want to scale on-prem? Uh, do they want to scale to the cloud? And the cloud market itself is this very elastic, very easy to to, to grow and, and shrink and contrast. Um, or can you do some of those types of things on-prem, you know, with, uh, uh, with, with GreenLake and with some other programs that, that let you have your on-prem security blanket and your on-prem performance with the hands-off operational uh, uh, paradigm and the elastic growth that you have in, in cloud. I think that's the best of both worlds for some. Let's end with a call to action. So, so what advice would you give to, to practitioners, you know, clients that are looking to modernize their infrastructure, mm -hmm. they're trying to support their digital transformation, they want to get from point A to point B, they don't want to spend a billion dollars doing it, mm -hmm. they got to go on a journey, how, how do they get there, what's your advice? My, my advice is to, uh, to, certainly I'm jaded here, but I would, I would say engage professionals who have done this many, many times, uh, don't, don't learn on the job uh, here, you can make some expensive mistakes, moving workloads to the cloud, and we've seen this, uh, we've seen you know, anecdotal evidence and in-person evidence of people moving to the cloud, doing it the wrong way, and then having to migrate that back. That's a costly mistake. So make sure you do your planning. Uh, migrate in phases. Uh, move your data there in phases. Uh, bite off some smaller uh, chunks first uh, to make sure that you're, if, you're, if you have growing pains, teething pains, that that happens with a non-critical application. 
build your knowledge base, and then uh, make some, some better decisions. Engage people like Green Pages to help you roadmap your, your journey, your hybrid cloud journey. Um, and, and don't go in with a preconceived notion of where you need to end, right? Um, it, the, the applications, the performance requirements, and that assessment work up front should dictate where those, where the best place is for those workloads. Great advice, uh, Tim Ferriss from Green Pages. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, it's great to have you. Well, thank you. And right. thank you for watching everybody. We'll see you next time. This is Dave Vellante, we're out. <laughs>